Hello and welcome back to another Price CP Roblox Studio tutorial. In our tutorial for today, we're going to learn about image buttons in Roblox. Let's start by going to our started GUI and we're going to add a screen GUI. I already have a screen GUI, so I'm not going to add another one. But if you don't have one, you can add one. In your screen GUI, you're going to click the plus sign and you're going to add an image button. If you don't see image button, you can search for it here. Otherwise, you can just select the image button. We can take the image button somewhere to this side. So you can see here, inside my screen GUI, I have three different things in it. I have the scrolling frame, which is this picture frame here. And now I'm going to use my image button to turn on and off the scrolling frame. Another thing we have in here is the image button we just added. And the third thing is the text button that we added in the last lesson. So the text button also turned on and off the, the scrolling frame. But our focus for today is the image button. Right, so now let's click on the image button and let's check the properties. So the image button has three interesting properties that we want to look at. The first one we want to look at is in the image section, there's an image property. So we can pick, we can select an image for this image button. Let's now go to our toolbox. So I'm going to go home, toolbox. And I'm going to select images here. First, I, I want to show you something. So let's go back to the uh, properties window. So you see you have a main image here, right, for your image button. But you also have two other images that you can upload to this image button. You have a press image. That means when, when the, the button is pressed, it's going to show this image here. And also you have a, a hover image, which means when you hover your cursor over the image, it's going to show this button, th this image here. So if you have something like I have right here, I have three different, I have the same button but with three different color, then, then you can use something like this. For example, if I use, um, say, say if I use this one for my main image, so I'm going to copy asset ID, and I'm going to put that into, I'm going to paste it into my main image. The second one, I'm going to use this one for my hover image, copy asset ID and I'm going to go to my hover image. I'm going to paste that in. And the last one, this one is for the press but button press image. So I'm going to copy this one and I'll put it into press image here. All right, so now my button has three different images in it and if I hover over, I hover my, my cursor over the photo, you see it changes the color. And then if I press it, I have a different image. So there are three different images in there. If you do not have three photos like this one that, that has different colors, then you can script it to, to change the color of your image button, which is what we're going to do in this tutorial for today. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to remove the press image here as if we don't have it. And I'm going to remove the hover image here. And I'm going to change this image instead of that image. I'm going to use a different one. So how about we use the fire image here? For the main image, I'm going to use the fire image. So now here I only have, let me close this one here. I only have one image, so I cannot uh, do like the hover and the press images because I only have one image. So either if I Photoshop this image and make it a different color, I can put it into the hover or press, or we can write a, a script to change the color. So here, to write the script to change the color, I'm going to go to my image button and I'm going to add a local script. 
First thing I want to do is I want to reference to my image button. So I'm going to declare a variable local. Let's say image button equals to script dot parent. Next thing I want to do is I want to reference to the scrolling frame with which I want to remove when the button is the image button is pressed. So I'm going to say local. And let's see how we get to look to the uh, scrolling frame. From the image button, we have to go to the parent and then go down to the scrolling frame. So it's going to be scrolling frame equals to image button dot parent dot scrolling frame. The next thing I want to do is I want to watch my mouse cursor. So when it enters the image, I have to change it to a different color. When I press the button down, it has to be a different color. And when I release the button, it has to be a different color. And when I leave the image, it's going to be a different color. All right. So there's four different events that we're going to have to listen for. So let's go back to the local script now, and we're going to listen for those four events. So here are the four events. The first event here is when the image button dot mouse enter, that's when the mouse enters the image. We're going to connect to a function and the, the function is going to be the same function. It's going to be a change color function, but we're passing in different parameters to the function. So the first one is when the mouse enters the image, we're going to pass in mouse over. The second one is when the you're inside the image and you press the button one down, then we're, we're going to pass in activate it. The third one is when you release the button, the, the button is back up. So we're going to pass in mouse over again. So when you enter the image and when you press and release the button, it's going to be the same image, right? So your mouse cursor is going to be over the image, but it's not pressed down. So it's going to be the same image. This one and this one is going to be like the hover image. This one is the press image is the activated. And the original is the, uh, the, the main image when nothing is happening. All right. So the last one here is when the, the mouse leaves the image. So, so your cursor is no longer in on top of the image is outside the image. Then you return it back to the original state. All that is left for us to do now is to go and create that function to change the color. So let's declare local function and the name of our function is change color. Our function has one input parameter. Let's call it state for the state of the, the image or the state of the cursor. So the first one we want to check is when the, the state is mouse over. So we're going to say if state equals to mouse over. Then we want to change the color of the image button. So we're going to say image button dot image color image color three equals to color three dot new. And then you just click on this little circle, the colorful circle here. Right right now the color is black if you don't do anything. You see it's showing you right here. But just click on this circle and you can pick a different color. For example, green. So now when our mouse cursor is over the image, the image color is going to turn green. The, the next state that we want to code is when it's pressed, it's activated. So we're going to go down here. We're going to say else if state equals to activate it, then We want to change the image button color to color three dot new. 
and let's make it blue. Else, so this is the final case. The final case is when it's not mouse over and it's not activated. So it's gonna show the original uh, photo. So we're just gonna change the color to, to white. So image button, dot image color, image color three equals to color three dot new. And we'll just pick a white color for that. All right, let's play and take a look. So here's my image button. If I move my cursor here inside the image, it changes the color to green. If I press it down and hold, the, hold it down, it changes to blue. And if I release it, it goes back to green. So I can keep on pressing and releasing here, right? So pressing is blue, releasing is green. Now if I move my cursor outside of the image, off the image, then it goes back to, to the original state. One last thing we need to do is, right now when you press the, the image, nothing is happening. So what we need to do is when it's pressed, we need to uh, remove this picture frame here. So let's go back. Now we need to listen for the activated event of the image button. So we're gonna say image button dot activated. When it's activated, we're gonna connect to a function and in our function we're going to change the visible property of the scrolling frame so we're going to say scrolling frame dot visible equals to not scrolling frame dot visible one other thing I want to do is I want to move this photo here doesn't want to move let me try again I want to move it to the side I don't want to put it in the middle of my screen here let's play again and take a look all right so now if I hover my cursor over it changes color back out in now if I press it turns to blue if I let go of my my button now the picture frame disappear. Press again, it's back on. Press again, it's gone. As you can see right now, both my button, my, my image button and my text button here, they're both doing the same thing. They, they open and close this picture frame, right? The scrolling frame. So, so what I wanna do is, instead of having both of these out here, I want to throw this text button at the bottom here and change the text to say close. So when this one opens this, and then, you know, like if you scroll through this and when you're done, you can click close here as opposed to go back here and click this one to close it. So let's see if we can do that. To do that, I'm gonna go to my Explorer window here and here's my text button. I'm gonna throw that inside the scrolling frame. So now my text button is inside the scrolling frame. One thing you wanna make sure is you wanna to go to your text button and make sure that the uh, layout order, uh, you can put 10 in there because your Im image labels has zero for the, the uh, layout order. So your text button, if you make it 10, if you make the layout order 10, it's gonna to go to the bottom of the list. And there it is, it's at the bottom of the list. Re remember as long as your your list layout, right? Uh, as long as your sort order in the list layout says layout order, then your button is gonna go to the bottom of the list. If, if it says name, then it's not necessarily gonna be at the bottom of the list because it's gonna be sorted in the name order. So just make sure it says um, sort orders, layout order, and then you can make the text button to has to have the highest layout order number and it's gonna go to, at the bottom of the list. Next thing we want to do is we want to change the color of this text button. So the background now is blue. It's probably not the best color. Uh, 
Maybe I'll make it this color. Yeah, I, I guess that color is fine. I want to change the uh, the size. The size of... Oh, let me click OK here first. I want to change the size of this. What else we want to do? We want to show the text. So let's go to the text section of that text button. We got to change the text transparency from 1 back to 0. And now, now it says photos. We want to change that to say close instead of photos. All right, so now it's a close button. Uh, one other thing we want to do is we want to go to the uh, local script of the text button. Where's my local script? Oh, here it is. All right, so right now it, it's toggling the, the picture frame, which which it's gonna work. It, it's it's gonna work because whenever you see this button, means that the picture frame is gonna be on, so you're gonna toggle it, so it's gonna become off. So so that's gonna work. But if you want, instead in, instead of toggling this, you can just make it false. So it's always gonna be off whenever you click on here. It's gonna turn off the picture frame. So my text button here. It's gonna be script.parent. So that's still true. This is the script, right? So the parent is the text button. But let's take a look at the picture frame. It's no longer text button dot parent. Let me close this. So it's gonna be the parent of the text button. We're gonna remove scrolling frame here. It's gonna be the parent of the text button. And I believe that should do it. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure this one still works, okay? And now if we go here, click on close, ready? There we go, it's gone. And to open it back up again, you got to do this one again, right? And you, you can use this one to close if you like, but if you're here in this window, you can close this. Alright everyone, that's how you use image buttons in Roblox. Take care and we'll see you again soon.